Um, we're actually starting this critique with um, Denise's watercolour painting from the lesson, um, um, the second week, sorry, of April. And um, me being the bad tutor that I am, uh, managed to omit uh, Denise's um, work from that particular critique. So um, apologies to Denise for this. Um, one that slipped through the net, um, but we're here now and we'll um, we'll have a look at it. And immediately afterwards, we will be critiquing the acrylic work that we did in the workshop, um, and uh, which was all about pushing our colours. So, um, just looking at Denise's watercolour painting here, and I can see good shapes in the background. There may be a couple of hard edges there, which I'll point out in a moment. Um, shapes of our geese. And just to remind everybody, this was really, um, this is a painting that we entitled adding animals to our scenes. So it wasn't effectively, wasn't solely about the, the, the creatures, these, these ducks or geese or hens, whatever it was we chose to put in our farmyard scene. It's not like we were um, aiming to make a, an animal portrait painting. Um, it was more about how we would um, enhance other scenes by the addition of um, uh, putting animals in our scenes. So um, yeah, so it's just a just a couple of things I'm picking up on here. Um, I think the geese are good. Um, and as mentioned with a couple of the others, um, a similar sort of situation where sometimes when um, an object like this is the only piece of white paper in the entire scene, we might need to just tame it back a little bit, you know, just, just add something into them. I can see a little bit of I would call sort of interference from other from 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 some spattering on some of these uh, birds, which does improve their look. Um, but just be a little bit careful that they don't look a bit cut out and stuck on when we're relying on such a um, a clean white shape um, over what is essentially is quite a busy background. Um, but um, what I do want to pick up on is um, these dark shapes against the trees. They're actually, they were meant to be shadows. Now, um, just uh, this is a, a bit of advice here, um, Denise. Um, let's compare the shadow that falls on this roof of the building here to the shadow that falls on the trees behind. There's a difference to the edges and it's really an important thing to, to, um, to learn. When shadows fall on broken and soft objects like bushes and trees, it might be grass, it might be hay bales, a soft sort of, generally a soft surface, those edges of your shadows will be much, much softer. Um, whereas we've got sort of 95% hard edge here with a smaller amount of soft edge, needs to be reversed. You need sort of 90% soft edge on those shadows against the trees with perhaps a little 5% of hard edge somewhere. Now on the roof, it's the other way around again. So we would expect, because the reason is um, on, on the roof and walls and buildings on, on gr hard ground surfaces, any hard surface is going to um, generally have a um, hard edge. The shadow that falls on a hard surface the edge of that shadow is going to be hard. Okay, so um, so do do try to bear that in mind, um, and you can go back into this painting with even with your finger if you like a damp finger and just smudge smudge that, and you'll find that it looks so much better for it if you do it. It, it sort of happened over here a little bit, um, so more of that would have been um, probably a better result would have would have given you a better result. Um, the shape here is meant to be a sort of shrub. Now, because it's a, it's a single colour, there's a s slight evidence of something in there, maybe a little tiny patch of burnt sienna about here somewhere. Um, 
but because the colors have been mixed so much by the brush on the paper they've turned into one color and one color um, equals flatness um, again you know in, in your defense I, I would certainly say I can see you've made the effort here to put a little bit of spatter that does make a difference a little bit of white spatter has gone over that area um, so it, it, it stops looking uh, which helps sorry but um, without enough inference without enough of a strong message to tell us what this shape is it it falls short of, of, of what it's meant to be um, the other thing that doesn't help is that we've decided that the, the, the shrub has been cut straight right at the edge there of the post and what's happened is this white post that was sticking out um, has, we, we call them unfortunate coincidences you've got a vertical white post in front of a vertical edge of a shrub of another shape behind so you don't know whether that's you're not sure what that is is it part of the shrub is it something against the wall you, you really need to, I'll just grab um, a marker um, here and show you what I mean um, you really need to avoid um, that shape of the shrub that's behind should go well beyond it should go well beyond the post this post here and well beyond the doorway vertical behind that's on the building back there so um, and with a bit more warmth you can imagine just pushing a little bit of warmth into this area here it would give that shape form okay so um, so these aren't big um, issues by any means they can be learned very quickly uh, with a bit of practice so there's there's something for you to think about Denise um, shadows uh, what it's all about what they're falling on what object and surface they are falling on just remember the mantra you know soft surface soft edges hard surfaces hard edges so it's a it's you know it think of it that way and it's easy to remember um, as far as the rest of it is I mean it's good it's laid out well um, it's quite a bit of what looks like small brushwork in some of these shapes you know that shadow I think could have been applied with a much bigger brush with no more than two three at the very most brush brush marks but it looks as though I can see the point or the edge of um, if it has been uh, applied with a large brush we've decided to do it with the very point or edge of that large brush whereas it you know you just need to try and avoid all these you can see these lines in here so if you can try to avoid that and apply your your shadows a little bit wetter a little bit richer um, with the flatness of the brush rather than the point or the edge of a brush and certainly avoid small brushes full stop um, but good light yeah um yeah very good and uh once again um denise apologies for um having left you off the original critique for that particular week okay um just moving on to our next um painting which now is the first of the um the acrylic workshop that we did in at the end of april where it was all about pushing our colors um and pushing our colors is is as the name suggests well what it means is this um, the, the the phrase to push your colors means to keep your colors as saturated as possible in other words if particularly when you're referring to bright colors let's say for instance as we can see in this painting you know a lot of cadmium yellow there's a sort of cadmium red in areas there's ultramarine blue cobalt blue um, these colors are sort of kept as close as possible to those um, as they come out of the tube so we're not affecting them it's a it's a it's a contemporary effect it's a contemporary style used a lot with in sort of more modern um, styles um, but the trick to it is to um, make good shapes um, and and only decent another term is is saturation color saturation there are many terms um, the chromatic value it simply means um, full saturation again simply means a color that is basically what it is as it comes out of the tube with any without any effects from other colors um, so um, 
yeah it 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 takes a bit of learning actually it seems you know on the face of it quite a simple thing to do well that's you know that's easy we can just um apply the paint as it comes out of the tube um but the, it does require some subtle um techniques uh and we're starting off here with diane's um the, sh the shapes are good uh, a little bit concerned about the building it seems to sort of bend down a little bit slope slope down here whereas that line on the edge of the roof doesn't so those probably need to be um, parallel a little bit more parallel to each other let me just grab again um, a, a, a draw a line here try to keep that perfectly parallel to that line there okay that way the um, that way the uh, perspective looks better it, it's amazing actually if I get rid of that a second it's amazing how, how it, you didn't go far off you, ju you just tape it off downwards slightly there and it's amazing that's all it needs really to, to sort of spoil the look of that um, so yeah just be a little bit careful there I think possibly what's happened is this I think that um, that turn that corner there is where we thought we would show the slope at the end of the roof so I'm sort of beginning to understand what that was there but it, it looks because it's too be, because it's um, there's a continuation from the line that just turned around the corner there it, it doesn't look quite so angular as it should um, and we were meant to lose that edge so it's probably what you were thinking I should imagine is to lose that edge and it sort of softened and looked a little bit odd anyway um, the other shapes are nice and contemporary very um, uh, sort of semi abstract which is what we were um, looking for so um, there's some good boxes uh, ticked there do like your shapes here these are these are great shapes back there um, but um, if you remember on the on the day we were trying to make this little shape here a bit of a, a standalone shape again I'll just grab my um, pe uh, pen um, this 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 shape in here was a, a bit of a standalone um, shape and, and tonal value because you've gone into the neighboring areas with white added white on top of the yellow that doesn't look as special anymore this this area here doesn't look as special so you got to just try and be uh, just just bear in mind the tonal um, the importance of tonal value if you're really wanting to show something as an individual object if you really want to show that individual object off then um, you know don't repeat what you've done elsewhere because it there you know between that area and the, and the trees behind there's um they're much the same sort of thing so keep it varied try to keep it varied if you can but um yeah the, the, the shapes are good overall the shapes are good so um yeah a, fi a fine effort Diane okay um, and next up we have Gwen and um, yeah I, I, again you know, there's there's some very uh, there's a, a sort of contemporary feel about this modern feel about this this area here um, I, I I can't be sure um, what that is but um, it does make for a very abstract a, a, a very nice abstract I, I hasten to add uh, effect to this painting um, it's funny that there's a fine line and between what we do um, what how we see something before um, before we paint it and and what it looks like when we do paint it um, so actually wonderful it's very it's very contemporary looking um, on to the willow tree of course which, which was which was sort of our part of the main um, part of the focal point um, of this of this painting albeit perhaps not um, a little bit too far into the middle um, it is good 
it, just be a little bit careful with um, the regularity, if you like. By that I mean these are much the same. Okay, there's not probably not quite enough um, difference in shape and form and, and and size. Okay, those are slightly smaller at the top, which is good. Um, yeah, you have to be a little bit careful um, how how we break things up. And what we were looking for was um, yes, it was a contemporary um, effect, but um, we 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 always well in this occasion we were still trying to make it representational. In other words, we we this is a was a, a willow tree just um, you know hanging over the water's edge here we we've got to still try and put an essence of that we've still got to tell our viewer give them a little bit more of a cue that that's what they're looking at clue sorry that that's what they're looking at so um, yeah okay um, the shapes here are good okay the water's disappeared a little bit down here you know our river here um when we look looked at our our photo i think the river went sort of the bank of the river that went there and it sort of disappeared around a corner here and um all this area here was was water so again be you know give give, give some consider sorry give some thought to um how abstract you want to go I mean if you want to drop me an email saying you know this was fully intentional on your part um, and please do um, I, I'm, I'm sort of I can only sort of um, compare it to our uh, remit of, on, of the day sort of thing um, overall I, I, it's it's a fascinating um, piece of, of, of abstract work. It, it certainly lends itself more to abstract. Yeah, it's good. Um, it's a very good effort. Uh, good work, Gwen. Okay. On now to um, Lindsay's. Okay, this is well structured. And yes, it's well structured and thought out actually. Um, now this has got a balance of uh, has maintained some representational more than just a bit of representational um, uh, value the willow tree looks fantastic it's good yeah it's nicely broken up here the willow tree so you can see that this is a reflection get a definite um, feel that this is water down here that's really nice. I really like this. Um, the blues up here and how you've created your edge up here. It's very good. Very good. Yeah, it's a it's a sometimes a fine balance between keeping things modern and contemporary looking, um, but still staying within the remit of it being representational. Um, this this again that the probably the most abstract area for a lot of us I, if I remember on the day was this left hand side and we were just saying about um, Gwen's uh, area here that was very abstract and this is probably the most abstract area of your painting also Lindsay um, it's good though there's a gr fantastic quality to the texture over here just this the this area here let me just grab a uh, a marker the texture in here is beautiful it's a lot of sort of scumbling with possibly a, a quite a stiff brush I think either a hog hair or a maybe even a flat brush perhaps uh, Lindsay and can let me know that's lovely love this color there that is a real beautiful standalone um this this i like this painting you probably guessed um it, it works beautifully good texture around here everything in balance yeah that that's a very good painting lindsay okay um moving on to uh maria's 
This is beautiful too. Beautiful. Um, again, a nice balance. It's it's in that territory again of being perfectly rep perfectly representational. We know what we're looking at here, um, but there's there's also the addition of that abstract quality. Wow, it's good again. Um, I'm just checking, you know, and checking around the painting for areas where I can give you advice here. Um, and it's it seems almost churlish of me to pick up on something like this, but um, because because of the style is um, semi abstract, I was going to say this, this this wall here is probably um, a little bit out of scale. You know, um, as this wall came towards the big bridge, bridge wall, it's probably at this area here, it should be a much chunkier affair, you know. Um, but as I say, really, when we're dealing, when we're dealing with um, this sort of semi-abstract um, style anyway, things like that are perfectly acceptable. But I'm just pointing it out, to be honest, because, you know, I, I can't, there's not much fault that I can find in here. I just feel as though I should offer some advice, some something for you to consider at least. Um, it's lovely, lovely. Yeah, again, well done, Maria. Okay, we're on to Pam here. This is lovely and bright. Okay. Good tree, beautiful tree. House is good. Okay, um, again, you know, it, it, I've got to be very careful when I see people paint in a very obvious and deliberate manner. What I'm seeing with yours here, Pam, is um, a lot of use of stippling. There's a, there's a, there's a, a an, um, a, a common technique throughout here. It's used here. It's used in the sky. It's used in the trees. It's used down here, I, I, and in the water down here, and in the wall here. Yep, yeah, there, there's a lot of stippling and uh, scumbling. Um, now, a little bit of that, and I would say it looks fantastic through here, in your uh, river bank, and you might get away with a little bit more of that elsewhere. You know, a little bit down here, which you have done, but when it's sort of almost dominates 100% it's the it, it can look like it's the only brush mark you know so be a little bit careful or perhaps practice a few other um, types of brush marks um, it, 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 and I tell you what you've got a good painting here it's a very good painting I love the colors um, it's bright it's happy it makes me smile um, if you want a little bit more sophistication in, 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 the work, in your work now, practice a few different types of brush marks rather than rely on, you know, this, this one sort of stippled textured um, type of brush mark that we see throughout. Um, you know, and again, I, I will say this, you know, if, if, it's, if it's a texture, if, sorry, if it's a style, an effect that you really like to see throughout your work, then stick to it. Don't, you know, just only, you know, t take what I say as advice and, uh, for you to consider if this is something you like. I mean, it, it, what it looks like, it gives the painting that, um, it gives the painting that sort of look of a textile artist type um you know and paintings there's somebody that lives locally t to me in abergavenny here that works in um who, who who applies uh wool and other fabrics uh, and creates paintings and landscapes and things like this from wool and it has that effect so you know um it certainly has a place in there uh, and it's it's on, on this basis really i'm making that comment just for you to consider just think about that i mean i i love the texture um but it for me maybe there's just it it, it perhaps appears just a little too much um but it's gorgeous uh, that i could that area there i could look at all day it's beautiful that 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 riverbank 
Um, and it just be a little bit careful with the windows. They're a little bit, a little bit static. You might, you might need to soften those two out a little bit. We could just leave that window on the end there as it is, but soften the edges of these two windows just to sort of, just, just to give us that um, tran a better transition towards what is really the big willow tree is our sort of focal point territory. Um, but it, it is a happy painting. It's nice to look at. It's it's happy. Yeah. Good work, Pam. OK, we uh, next up, we have Ron. It's, it's just wonderful to see all these different um, interpretations are on the same theme. Well, from the same photograph, in fact. This again, there's no there's no doubt as to what we're looking at here. Um, I can see, Ron, that you've been very disciplined in the use of the white paint, which is good. It gives a, a, a depth to the colours. Um, you've got a bit of white paint, obviously, up in the uh, sky there. And this is a little bit of advice for everybody, folks. If you're using white in acrylic, and I'm often sort of warning people about um, how easy it is to overuse the color white with with acrylics because um, if, if you rely on it to lighten your colors um, then uh, you know um, be, be careful if you overdo it um, when the painting dries out the following day it can have a very chalky pasty look about it now again if if um, uh, you know that could be your taste and if I'm honest there are there are a lot of paintings out there I see where the um, artist has deliberately used a lot of white in their mix and they have a, a chalky almost pastel type effect in their acrylic paintings but you have got to be careful because you you, you can bleach um, you, you, it, it, what it does it, it, it brings all the tones too close together so imagine that you know if you're putting too much white in the green tree over here too much white in the in the yellow willow tree too much white in in the house eventually what happens is the tones disappear they become close to one um, but what Ron has uh, proved has, has proven here is um, so as proved to us here is um, that by sticking to areas where there's absolutely no white included, you get these really rich depth to your colors. So what I would say, Ron, next time you're putting white in your sky like that to create um, clouds, I wouldn't use pure white. I would pick up some white, put a tiny bit of the color that you used for the background, i.e. the blue, whatever it was, with that white, but I mean a tiny amount of the blue and scumble that in very gently. So it's not pure white. It's it's very rare that we use pure white directly on top of the surface. It's better that you, as I say, just um, take some white, add a little bit of another color, probably the blue that's already on there to that white and scumble that in. When it dries out, it'll look lighter. Um, the Incidentally, when you're not using it, it's a tricky one. And when you're not using white, um, most colors will um, do the opposite. They'll dry out darker the following day, 24 hours, 48 hours. Um, acrylic paints will look darker. It's and, and that's probably why the white looks as though it's stuck on the surface. It's as though, it's as though the other colors sort of go into the surface and, and sink. Um, whilst the white seems to have managed to stay on, on, on the surface creating a pasty look so do bear that in mind folks um this is this is sorry ron th this is for the benefit of everybody here this is a lovely painting um the, your shapes around here are fantastic they're in that semi-abstract territory which is what i like personally um uh there's good shapes here very contemporary um, I think your wall is about the right scale there because it comes down here. It's the right scale compared to all the other shapes. Um, this is sh this is sh this shows up nicely. It is the same colour as the willow tree. That's no biggie. It's okay. We know it's not part of the willow tree because it's completely the wrong shape for it to be part of the willow tree. Um, I think on mine I added a bit of white in that yellow, and it's what I mean meant about when we talked about the sky there. For me to get that yellow to look different and a bit bit 
deliberately a bit pasty and chalky I added the white with the yellow not white on top of yellow if that makes sense I didn't put the yellow on and then put white on top of the yellow I simply added pre mixed the white and the yellow together and applied it as a single um, one-off application if you like good shapes um, yeah the brushwork is lovely I can and it's always nice in both acrylics and oil paints when you can see the brushwork of the artist how they've chosen to form give form to these shapes here loving I'm really loving those um, brush the brushwork clearly see the brushwork the almost the fibers of the brush are in uh, are there to see it's good painting like that like that yep good okay um, and we've got Sarah now there is white in this white white's been used quite a lot um, now before you know I say any more on that issue um, I've got to say you know if this is a if this is your intention um, and please don't let me or anybody else sort of talk you out of uh, changing away from that I think you've got balance here Sarah um, so um, what I do like I, I love the way you've given us let me just grab a, a, a pen a minute uh, what color should we go for here I love the way your brushwork and I guess brushwork is so important this is good brushwork too love the way your brushwork is suggesting all this here there's a some lovely movements in here you know um, and then when we get down to here as we would it's very clever actually very thoughtful when you've got to your water you've made deliberate verticals to suggest that this is reflective surface bit of horizontal reflection there yeah it's subtle but it's there I like that it's it, it makes you it pulls you in it, it, it involves the viewer and that's what a, you know every good painting should do pull your viewer in um, there's just enough activity it's not it's good it's right on the edge of it's right on the edge where you know another brush stroke over here would have spoiled it another brush mark over here would have spoiled it but it's, you just seem to have stopped um, and it takes a lot of discipline that you, you seem to have stopped um, it, it, uh, you seem to know where to push your detail and not to overwork it maybe that you've gone over things deliberately or you had to 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 to, uh, to to make amends in places that's absolutely fine it doesn't matter how you get to the end result as long as you get there as long as you can uh, at the end of it say I'm pleased with that you know this is this is good um, that that is the beauty of, of the medium too you know very much unlike something like watercolor um, where you don't really get much of a safety net um, with acrylics you can but uh, having said that it's not easy you know I, I would never suggest that you know paint painting acrylics as it's much easier than watercolor it, 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 it is to to a degree but not that much there's, there's still a lot of things in acrylics that will um, that we will probably struggle with um, especially when we're starting out um, okay so there's quite a bit of white in here Sarah um, but as I say it um, it's in balance and I think you've used the white well I think you've used the white well if you were uh, after this um, sort of sat there thinking you know I, I, I may have overdone the white you know you can take a soft flat brush with a, a, a brush with a nice soft fiber and you can glaze any areas out that you feel maybe a, a little too opaque but be careful with that don't do it just for the sake of it be absolutely sure in the first place that you're not that you are that you're unhappy enough to have to do that I, I would sort of put this one in the bank and say you know I've learned something here um, and and I like it anyway I like the look of this painting so um, yeah it, it's it, it, it it's a grower too the more you look at it I, th I think you've got a natural um, 
ability there to, to create good textures. You've got a you've got a real skill there. It's it's good. Yeah, well done, Sarah. Okay, Sherry. I do like the um, colours that you've used in this. Um, it's been it is quite by uh, ab in colour terms very abstract. Um, this this pure sort of purple over here um, and shape, which is. You know, uh, not a bad way to go, uh, decision to make if we are looking for contemporary semi-abstract uh, effects. Um, you know, the, the, the tree here, I, I, my, my only concern might be that the, the willow tree might not, in this case, represent the willow tree. Um, I think what we probably need, and it wouldn't take much to do this anyway on top of this, let me just grab a, a pen here a moment. Um, if we could try and get it more sen more of a sense of the, dr the drape, you know. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember on the day, I, 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 I like shapes in nature to other shapes in nature. In other words, I saw, I see willow trees almost like looking at um, a cascading waterfall. So the essence, the quality, the underlying identification of the object is vertical, is, is those draping, lovely, long, thin, skinny, string-like branches that willow trees have. You know? And without that, I think we don't have a willow tree. So, um, so what I'm going to suggest, Sherry, is um, for this individual painting is is try that over these shapes and you'll probably see what i mean it'll it'll look a little more elegant it doesn't this shape here doesn't look like it belongs to the rest of the painting um but it could so easily if, if we did you know just in uh, if we pointed our viewers slightly gave our viewers a slightly easier clue to to interpret what they were looking at okay um, but the rest of it, you know, is, the rest of it's good. There's um, some good shapes over here, some dark shapes over here. Okay. Um, yeah. So just, just, just bear a couple of those those things in mind, um, Sherry. I do like this. This is there's some wonderful texture over here in this near shape yeah um okay well then sherry we're looking at bobs here um trying to sort of just separate it from the newspaper that's behind there a little bit it's a little bit distracting um yeah sort of trying not think about that there if i can um Okay, it's good. It's good shape to a tree. Could perhaps, perhaps Bob, the um, tree could have been a bit more upright. Um, again, you know, there's. If you, it, I think if you if you look at these willow trees um, as they drape over water, there, there is a sort of vertical to them. They're quite. Um, they have this this sort of quality about them that they that they they drape they hang vertically um so you um it, it might be worth you know uh, just pe turning that area there into sky just continue the sky into that area uh, and keeping our willow tree more or less vertical as it hangs over the water um i like the um like the background there and the the fields in between between the dark edge of the field back there and and these closer areas um so probably just need to delineate let me just get rid of this a minute um probably just need to del delineate um the different passages the different areas bob a little uh, a little more uh, um, with a little more conviction, if you like. Um, what I mean is, imagine if we could um, take, um, 
we could show this this is the river bank remember if we look at our photo okay we could show that off there it's quite heavy it's uh, it's a it's a heavier line here than the one that divides that line there against the field because that one's a bit you know um it, it's it, it, it's probably going to be uh, less bold because of the light that you'd expect on on this river bank whatever this growing here in the river bank so perhaps a little more um solidity to, to this area here um, and remember that river bank continued didn't it across here up to the bridge so it would go it would go into towards the bridge in this sort of fashion here that would mean you know that maybe that our house was a little bit um just draw that out a bit for you so the, the the house here the building would have been a little bit taller so as not to be obscured by the the river bank um nice abstract shapes some 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 good abstract shapes in there um yeah and the and, and certainly you know we can tick the box in terms of uh, using saturated pushed colors here um they they they're certainly very close to where they were as they came out of the tube um and of course that was within reason we 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 um we still need to affect the colors a little bit with with the use of other colors you know making two yellows which you've done very nicely actually bob here like the way you've changed the yellow from this top area to the bottom area here just gives it a bit, a bit more interest and a bit more form you know we we all have our own you know when it comes to sort of representing and interpreting things in our own way we'll always do things differently as we were talking just a moment ago um, and that's good but we will always interpret and see things um, but uh, differently but we, we will also have different cutoff points um, one person's abstract is another person's you know tight sort of style and vice versa so um, you know if, if this exercise was good for anything I'm hoping you know it might point us uh, uh, as individuals as to where we are with our ideas you know it, we might be able to identify our own f feelings and preferences by um b by w working in uh, tr trying out styles that we might not ordinarily have um, entertained in the past so um yeah so give this this some thought bob the vertical of the tree it's, it's um the diag diagonals are good in paintings but some things are not meant ever meant to be diagonal um um clouds can be diagonal shadows can be diagonal um and subtle sort of movements in hillsides and landscapes and things like that can be diagonal um other things really to 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 to, to um to land upon their essence that you have to stick with what they're telling you and you know think about the the the, the willow tree um it's just observation really um get out to your local park your lake um that's near you and there's usually a willow tree somewhere near water and you'll see exactly what i mean by that it's 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 identifying the essence of of the subject matter and, and the things around us in in the things that around us in the world you know whether it be a tree whether it be um an animal a building a field a tr whatever um just just make simple observations and and try and retain them for um use in our in your paintings but um yeah it's good there's a lot of good in there bob um some great abstract stuff over here really like this okay so next up we have denise this is jolly this is lovely love the blues in this and i really like the way the blues have actually dominated um you know uh, it's something i i bring up a lot this is lovely denise uh, something i bring up a lot is is the 70 30 ratio 
And um, if you look at this, it's quite clear which color is the 70% is the dominant here. This gorgeous electric cerulean sort of blue territory as it varies slightly darker over here, continues down here. You can almost sort of see it moving like this through the, th around the painting here, into here, back up into here, back up into here, and very nearly there at that point, back up into the sky. That's that. This, this is what gives balance to our paintings. I love this. This is a really good um, painting. Um, I, the only thing I would uh, pick up on slightly here, Denise, is the tree again. You know, the uh, uh, the um, the the sort of I, I sort of get why I certainly understand the call for wanting to put geometric shapes. You know, these quite hard triangle shapes. Um, I, I get, I understand that. I, I like that in my own trees. Um, but I'm just wondering if the painting in this case, because we have to take every painting we do on its own merit a lot of the time, um, and sort of say, maybe, you know, this could just do with something more simplified. As long as you keep the, um, as long as you keep these, I, I call them cells, these, these chunks of branches varied, but give them... You might want to, in this painting, give them a slightly softer appeal to the eye, you know. Um, just, just, that's a nice shape there. So the odd, more geometric shape will can, can work in, inside. Um, but I, I, it's a, maybe this is just a personal taste, Denise, so forgive me. Um, but um, just, yeah, just, just have a look at that tree, and I wonder whether... A little bit of extra warmth in here, which will separate it from that lovely area there, that field in the background. A little bit of extra warmth in the lower part of this tree. You can almost drag what you've used in the building slightly, a glaze, a weak watery glaze, into some of this right-hand territory. Almost as though the colours of the willow tree are reflecting the colour of the building, you know, just down here. Um, and soften some, some of those triangle triangles back a little bit um, but I tell you what I really like this painting I love these little uh, these two just hits of something slightly darker that's so contemporary so modern and um, interesting and uh, entertaining on the eye uh, the textures are good really like that I really like that painting well, well done Denise Okay, we have Chris. Okay, Chris, this is good. This is bold. And I, here's, I think, somebody who knows exactly what they wanted from their painting. These abstract shapes again over here. Wonderful. Yeah, you know, how you've isolated each territory as bold and a sort of no-nonsense approach. Square there rectangle there smaller rectangle of a different tone and temperature there juxtaposed by this completely organic shape here i say it's rather i do like this these are good. this is good chris my only advice perhaps would be for you here is that for me the um, I know why we've we've softened the um, edge down here of a tree. I know why because in in the real world that's exactly what would happen. But this isn't the real world. Remember, I think your painting would benefit for having a much. Let's grab a different colour. Having a much bolder. Everything else in the painting is bold, and it's almost as though you 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 chickened out just for this bit here. You you need to sort of stay with your conviction and and make that edge down there just as hard and as bold as the edge that you've got at the top. And in fact, you want to sort of a, a few smaller shapes up here. So um, just a few smaller shapes up here like this would give us a sense of, um, you know, uh, of scale. Just to, just to acknowledge a little bit of realism just to sort of give realism a little bit of a gentle nod and say that's pr it would probably be better uh, and it, just to make the, the shape anyway look a little more 
um, interesting. So give that some thought, Chris. That, that's all I will say about this. I think it's great. I think it's a really contemporary, well thought out. Um, uh, you, you've painted with this with some conviction, and, and that's always good. Like to see a bit of conviction when we're in uh, people's work. You know, paint it like you mean it. Um, yeah, I can look at that all day. It's, it's, that's that's lovely. Well done, Chris. And we have, last but not least, Deirdre. Um, apologies for the size of the image, Deirdre. It was quite a small file, um, and I did try uh, to um, expand it in my software. Um, I, I, I gave it a couple of minutes trying to, tr trying to expand it in my software, but it started pixelating. So we do have a slightly smaller image here to work from. I, just, I will just enlarge it a little bit here. Let's see how it go, look, appears on this screen. That's not too bad, actually. Not as, yeah, it's just softening out a little bit as I expand. Um, so, um, there we are. Yeah, apologies for the, um, the lack of clarity. It, 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 unfortunately, it was a bit of a small file. Um, but you can still see the work here. Um, what I like about this... Deirdre, is the form that you've given everything and the depth just by adding I mean yes you've sort of you've pulled in a bit of realism by giving things form shadow edges but you know there's no way you can sort of uh, no way would this be construed as realistic and photo photographic of course I think it's lovely I, I think what you've done brings quality to the painting brings quality to the scene um, there's a you know the, the the colors are perhaps not as saturated as some of the others that we've seen in this critique um, you, you know the, the the addition of more color on top of uh, the the pure color means of course that the the, the colors are slightly less pushed um, they've been knocked back a little bit but I like the painting I think your scale and your sense of depth if you look at um, just how well this has been scaled it keeps jumping back out of here sorry um, I, I, um, it, I what I was going to say is if you look at the scale down here of the wall um, uh, it is spot on it is absolutely spot on and brings a sort of puts everything in perspective literally um, in terms of scale and position in the scene the sky is wonderful the the the, the, willow tree, the willow tree is good it it, it certainly um, you get that vertical sense there um, nicely broken up in terms of size the each individual um, if we break the tree down into its own little shapes little cells of branches and limbs that they are um, I think that's I think I think it works well and as I will say at the end of the day folks if it looks pleasing on the eye it's a success you know um, despite all the sort of rules and regulations that we're supposed to stick to what do we want at the end of it we we want a good painting something we, we enjoy looking at and this has got that with bells on it's it's a lovely looking painting well done Deirdre well that brings us to the end of this critique folks so um, as I say, I hope you've enjoyed it and you've found some benefit to it. And uh, I look forward to seeing um, the next lot of work from you. So see you soon.